know, commissioners, uh, I don't see Carmen here, so uh, you want to wait another couple of minutes or start the meeting? Our chair. We'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to go, Mr. Villegas? Okay, thank you everybody, sorry for that. Uh, good afternoon, we're going to uh, commence the meeting. If, hi, <laughs> apologies for my uh, couple minute tardiness here. And um, we're gonna start with, let's see, do we do roll call or a pledge? We're gonna call, I've called you to all to order. We're gonna have the roll call, please. Mr. Board Clerk. Sorry. Board Member Bennett? Here. Board Member Foy? Here. Board Member Long? Here. Board Member Morgan? Here. Board Member Parks? Here. Board Member Pollock? Here. Board Member Sharkey? Present. Board Member Tucker? Present. Board Member Zaragoza? Here. Board Member Ramirez? Here. So we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'll ask uh, uh, Member uh, Pollock to lead us, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, we will have uh, a review of the minutes. Is there all the, have all the members had a chance to take a look at them? and? We have a motion and a second. Uh, let's have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Abstain. All right. Uh, Member Tucker abstains. Thank you. This is the time for agenda review. And I'd like to ask if any members of the commission would like to move anything around, add, change, whatever. Thank you. Is there a second? So we have a motion, a second, to approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Great. Thanks. Um, we, this is the time when we have public comment set aside for uh, folks to come up and give us an opinion for items not on the agenda. Does anyone? I have no speaker cards. No. Okay. Um, now is the time for board comments. Do we have any members who'd like to make a comment? Mr. Morgan. You know, what's funny is that we have these periodic visits we have to make up north to Santa Barbara, Mike and I do, and uh, it's been nice, but now we get to go up there next week, and it's going to be rainy. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to go up and rain, folks. He's driving. <laughs> you promise it's going to rain? I hope so. That's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Any other members have a comment? No? All right. We'll go on to um, the next item, which is item 8, approval of 38 grant funding requests, totaling $2,778,060 for new air quality projects. And this uh, action requires a 6 tenths vote. Mr. Villegas. Chair Ramirez, members of the board, I'm Mike Vegas, Air Pollution Control Officer. And the Carl Moyer program provides incentives to businesses to go out and replace older, high emission diesel engines with newer, cleaner technology, such as low emission diesel engines, and in some cases, electric motors on some agricultural pumps. This is the seventh, 17th year the district has administered this program here in the county. And this year we received applications to replace a total of 85 diesel engines. Staff evaluated each proposal and ranked each project against the others <coughs> on the basis of cost effectiveness, looking at the cost per ton of emission reduction that we achieve with each project. And today we're recommending your board fund nearly $2.8 million for the most cost effective projects. This would include the replacement of 54 farm tractors, the replacement of engines on two fishing vessels, and the replacement of 13 agricultural pump engines. For today, the total 
Projected emission reductions are 35 tons per year of ozone precursors, mostly nitrogen oxides, 1.5 tons per year of toxic diesel particulate, and 295 metric tons of CO2, a greenhouse gas. As always, we will administer and monitor the grants to make sure that payments are made only after milestones are met. And we're also requesting authorization to make minor administrative changes to any of the grants. That's all I have. I'll be happy to take questions. Questions from the members? It's slightly off topic, but talking about diesel, we know what's happened with VW and all the uh, 40 times more pollutants that each one's giving. Did, um, does your staff or you have an idea how that compares to things like a tractor and you know what, what, what kind of impact are we not knowing about, not previously knowing about, but is occurring? And maybe that's be, a bigger report back. It, it probably is, is a report. We, we're going to be meeting with upper management from the California Air Resources Board first week in November, and this is definitely on the agenda because what we need is we'll need to hear from them. I, I heard it's roughly half a million vehicles, a little under 500,000 in the United States. But as you're aware, imported vehicles sell very well in California. These were touted as very green vehicles from a climate change standpoint. So my guess is on a per capita basis, we probably have more than some other areas in the country. So we'll just have to see what ARB comes up with on, on the number and the emission impact. It's mostly on the nitrogen oxide side, the emission issue with these vehicles. And as far as particulates, is that a... I think that was also an issue, but that wasn't the uh, pollutant that was up 40 times. It was nitrogen oxide. Well, it's good to, to see us being able to help these diesel emissions at least, and uh, I, I definitely would support the staff recommendation, so I'll make that motion. Second. Do we have other comments before we vote? I do have a, a question for you. Um, these are grants, so they do not have to be paid back. Is that correct? That's correct. These are grants. And, and we, for example, on an agricultural engine, a pump engine, we pay 70% of the cost of that new low emission diesel. And we incentivize it saying if you, if you actually replace that pump with an electric motor in the situation where you're near a power line, you can get 85%. But these are flat out grants. Okay. And the other thing is, as in the past, I really think the public would appreciate this program. It's cleaning our air, making it healthier. We don't see air. We feel it when it's bad in our lungs. But I'd like to see us really do a good PR uh, piece on this so the public knows. And we, I think it's been done before, so I think it'd be Yeah, great. we can do that again this year. Great. Any other comments? No, one quick question. Remind me again, what is the source of funding for these grants? It's really a state grant is most of it. Some of it is there's a $12 charge per vehicle, which is a smog abatement fee. A portion of that is used for Carl Moyer. That's the $2? The, the, the $2 that the county, that the APCD receives under Assembly Bill 923, basically we're using to supplement this program in addition to the state monies. Got it. Thank you. I'll give you a little history. Back then, they increased that smog abatement fee by $6 a year, but they also exempted you from smog check for the first five years of the new vehicle because they were passing. And basically, you know, if I, Instead of paying $30 to the state for those first five, I mean, you're paying $30, but you're not paying for that initial smog check, which is probably more like 55 plus. So, and basically you're taking money from an ineffective smog control program and putting it into a very effective smog control program. Thank you. So I think we're ready to vote. So we, and we do have a motion and a second, so, um, do we need, we need a roll call when you have six tenths vote? I right? believe so. Yeah. So let's do that roll call. Board Member Bennett? Yes. Board Member oh, Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Morgan? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Sharkey? Yes. Board Member Tucker? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. And Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on to item nine, adoption of a resolution approving the Air Pollution Control District's continued participation in Carl Moyer Air Quality Standards. 
Yeah, the district has participated in the Carl Moyer program since its inception in 1998. To date, we've allocated via grants $33 million in Ventura County, basically purchasing clean air wow. through How the much? replacement of diesel engines. That's we're, awesome. Thanks. It's an incredible program. When, when you go out there and, and you're in a, if you ever go whale watching, almost certainly you will find the district's logo somewhere on that boat because just about every sport fishing, whale watching, and commercial fishing boat has been through the program and a large number of egg or Michael, is that on the whale itself? <laughs> no. Not yet. <laughs> this program is critical to our efforts to clean the air here. It's accounting for approximately 20% of the reductions in nitrogen oxides we achieve nowadays in the recent history of the district. We replaced over 900 high emitting diesel engines in this county through this program. And it's run through a partnership between the California Air Resources Board and the 35 air districts where ARB actually comes up with the criteria to determine eligibility, the districts go out, solicit, evaluate, fund, and monitor the grants. In September of 2005, your board approved a resolution to allow us to participate through fiscal year 1415. In 2013, Assembly Bill 8 was passed, which actually extended the Carl Moore, Moyer program, which was due to sunset January 1st of 2014 out to January 1st, 2024. Therefore, we're coming back to your board with a resolution that will allow us to participate out through fiscal year 2024-25. That's all I have. I'll be happy to take questions. Questions from members? Motion for approval. Second. Is there any doubt we don't want to take this forward? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. <laughs> all right. Any other comments? Seeing none, let's vote. And we need another roll call, I believe. Remember Bennett? Yes. Remember Long? Yes. Remember Morgan? Yes. Remember Parts? Yes. Remember Pollock? Yes. Remember Sharkey? Yes. Remember Tucker? Gladly, yes. Remember Zaragoza? Yes. Remember Ramirez? Yes. Um, actually, we didn't need a roll call, but I, I'd certainly want it on the record if somebody voted no. I think we all would. So thank you very much. <laughs> Item 10, authorization for the Ventura County Air Pollution Control District to participate in the 2015-2017 California Alternative and Renewable Fuel and Vehicle Technology Program, et cetera. Chair Ramirez, members of the board, Stan Cowan, Air Quality Engineer. This item is a request that your board approve APCD participation in a Central Coast program to support hydrogen fuel stations for uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. According to ARB projections, hydrogen-powered fuel cell vehicles that have no carbon emissions will account for half the vehicles sold by the year 2050. In order to support this goal, legislation has been passed to provide funding both for planning and for the building of hydrogen stations under the Alternative Renewable Fuel and Vehicle Technology Program, which is administered by the California Energy Commission. Recent legislation has extended this multi-million dollar program until the year 2024 and $20 million per year is, is allowed to be spent for up to 100 hydrogen stations in California. Last year, the Energy Commission awarded $46 million to build 28 stations in California, including one in Santa Barbara, but none in Ventura County. And part of this effort is to bring some of that funding to Ventura County. There are currently two fuel cell vehicles that are available on the market. The the Hyundai Tucson and the Toyota Mirai, and both those are available for lease. Santa Barbara County APCD was awarded a grant under this hydrogen planning grant for about $242,000, and subcontracts were awarded along with that grant, and we were awarded up to a $13,000 contract subject to your approval. Our district has participated in planning grants since about 2011, including a $200,000 EV readiness grant that was done administered by the Ventura County APCD. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are not without concerns by critics, including high costs, safety, and uh, the use of natural gas to produce hydrogen. All these issues will be addressed by this planning effort. The cost of technology should improve as, it imp as the technology gets better and mass production is implemented. The safety of using hydrogen is well known and has been studied for many decades. Hydrogen is lighter than air, so any emissions, any leaks are rapidly dispersed, and 
do not enter any vehicle compartments. Hydrogen can, can be produced as renewable fuel based on using uh, solar panels and electrolysis of water. Staff recommends that your board approve participation in this program and authorize the APCO to sign the MOA with Santa Barbara County APCD. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions from members? Mr. Morgan? Yeah, electrolysis, of course, that's an expensive yeah. process of making hydrogen. But there's other processes, too, and they have to do with the sewer plants. Right. And they looked, because uh, I know I've done a little research on this, but had they looked at that and talking to different people on sewer plants where they could make hydrogen gas there? Yeah, they, it's converted from the methane in, in the right. sewer gas, right. It's a reformation process that... Because uh, you, have, you have those tanks, you have one that's there in Ventura, not too far from the coast, I mean from the highway. You've got one in Camarillo that's, again, not too far from the highway. Mm -hmm. You've got one in Oxnard that we could easily be trucked or whatever to wherever the necessities are of those traveling, especially on the freeway. That's where we'd be going most of those. And there's also trucks, not just cars, mm -hmm. that they've been experimenting with and doing a lot with in, down in the Harbor District. Mm -hmm. So some trucks do have the hydrogen cells. Yeah, the buses too, I think. Yes. The transportation. And so it, we, it's, as long as we don't have, this is like chicken before the egg. You know, as long as you don't have the, the egg out here or the chicken or whatever, you don't have a place to stop and refuel. Right. But if we start doing that and, and putting these together, I think the hydrogen cast will take off. But we need that first and start putting plans together where we can build those stations. Right. It needs to be a coordinated effort. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Is that what this, if we join this, is that what we'll be doing? Well, the planning will involve, yeah, doing both. We're looking at okay. converting fleets as well as putting in stations. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Other questions? I have a question. Um, huh? It's a $13,000 grant. Subcontract, yeah. Does that cover the whole cost of it? Uh, is it, more? it covers part, part of the cost. Do you know how much it covers? Uh, I don't know the exact amount. All right, it would be good information, I think, for the board to have later. I, I do support this, though. Do we have a motion? I move that we, we support this motion. So we have a motion and a second. And um, we do, well, I yeah. think we need, roll we actually do, do need a roll, roll call. call. It needs six tenths of a vote of a majority. So let's do the roll call again, just for fun. Board Member Bennett? Yes. Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Morgan? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Sharkey? Yes. Board Member Tucker? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. And Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Item 11, no controversy here. Presentation of Retirement Service Award to Barbara Page of the Ventura County APCD. We don't want her to go. We don't want her to go. She's apparently a free agent, though, so we have to let her go. Mr. Well, I wanted Davis. to give your board the opportunity to say bye to Barbara. She actually retired last month, mm -hmm. and the last day of work, we were at Gold Wings and she rolled out the new children's exhibit for air quality. I really urge you to go take a look at this. Uh, Gold Wings is a gem here in the county, and I believe the exhibit's probably the best exhibit in, in the museum at this time. It, it's, I think it's very interactive for kids, and it, it gives you the idea. I, I think a board member just said you can't see air, but it gives kids the idea that air is there, and it involves these tubes that move basically like a, I'd call it a fluffy bean bag. They're shot through the tubes, which kids really enjoy. And then there's like a pyramid of pollution, and, and sure enough, what do you see there? But we want to, when the parents are standing there, they're going to see a power plant. And, and we all make a decision when we go buy a light bulb. Are we going to see a foul or LED? It, it all matters. And, and I think she's done an excellent job, again, coming with, up with an idea that was very creative. The other thing I need to point out is... It's rare for a district the size of us to receive a, an award from the US EPA, and they're, they're called Clean Air Excellence Awards. Barbara has been directly responsible for the district receiving three. And, and, and that's remarkable. I know when she came to me with the idea of let's create eight, an air quality video, I, I didn't know the first thing about how to approach that. And I remember, luckily, our county council at the time had a friend from law school that did some entertainment law work. So we got some guidance, and sure enough, we got through that process, and she came out with an excellent product that was received an award from EPA. And I just, 
the most gratifying comment I got was that there was a fellow from the district attorney's office that watched the movie at the premiere in Ohio, and he told me, you know, Mike, that's Discovery Channel quality. Oh. I think that just, in one sentence, that mm -hmm. said what that project ended up with. And lastly, I don't know if you had the opportunity to look at the new climate change almanac that yes. Barbara produced. And it's easy to read. It probably sets more straightforward information from the US EPA, from NOAA, from NASA, from the UN panel in a very readable way. And you, you can step away from that realizing that, yes, this is an issue we probably need to address. And I, I think if you can achieve something like that that's readable for the general public, you've done a great service for all of Ventura County. And with that, I just want to thank Barbara for her service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you come forward, Ms. Page? Your efforts will be <coughs> duly noted and recorded, and let me see if there are any. Would you like to say something before we weigh in? Thank Speech. you, uh, Chair Ramirez and members of the board. Um, I can't believe it's been 26 years. It doesn't seem possible to me that I've been here that long. I went to, a, I think it was a couple years, Mike, a couple years ago, Mike and I were at an um, Earth Day event and there was a mother there with her kids, and they were looking at our Skykeeper activity book. And the mother said, oh, I, I had that when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> and I thought, yes, we've, I've been around for a while. And I actually had to revise the book after that, because I realized it's been around for too long. Uh, there are several people to thank, because I truly have had the most amazing career here at the district. And it, it's an interesting combination, because my background is in, in writing and communications, and so combining that with the technical information on air, which is highly complex, and trying to demystify that for the public has been a challenge and one that I just have loved doing. Dick Baldwin, the former APCO of the district, hired me. Uh, I was at the South Coast AQMD prior to coming here, and he was starting the public information effort, and I got the privilege of beginning the department. The California Clean Air Act had been amended in the late 80s, and one of the provisions was to have a public information uh, effort for all air districts. And Dick was very supportive of all those programs that we did then. And then Mike, um, after Dick left, Mike has again been a tremendous support, and I really appreciate that, and I appreciate his trust. Uh, when I came to him with ideas, he pretty much trusted me enough to let me go do them. And together, throughout the years, the, the district has distributed over a million pe uh, pieces of public information. We've, I've written over 300 newsletters, I think. We've done video. I've traveled the world, traveled the country. Our programs have been uh, copied, I, I, had, I, I can say. Uh, for, at other air districts, and right now the Mojave Desert APCD and the Santa Barbara County APCD are copying our latest effort at the Children's Museum and using the same concepts that we came up with. So it's really been a great run, and I have other people to thank. You know, you don't do this in a vacuum. I've worked with a lot of designers, a lot of uh, technical folks, directors, printers, and so many community partnerships. I think over 200, everybody from the Boys and Girls Club, to our National Park Service, to, you know, retail. I mean, it's just been amazing how many people we've partnered at, with throughout the years. So, and of course, I'm grateful to the board, uh, to you, and to previous uh, air pollution control boards for supporting my efforts and for help, you know, helping me do events, town hall meetings, all kinds of interesting things. Um, and finally, and I know Mike and I have talked about this. I think it needs to continue. This ed environmental education is very important, especially when we're talking about climate change. Um, there's things happening. And you know, the business has changed. Communications now is new. It's, it's being reinvented. Uh, social media, we're just beginning at the district to get into that. And I know Mike will have that continue. Uh, and there's a lot of work left to be done. And I, you know, you might see me around. I plan to do some. I live in Port Wainimi, so I plan to do some community um, work cheer. there and some volunteer work. And so I'll, I think I'll be out and about still in the county. So thank you very thank much. You. It's been just a fabulous <coughs> career here you. at the district. And thank you, Mike, again. Mr. Zaragoza. 
Thank you. I, I, Barb, I want to thank you, Barbara, because I had the opportunity, again, 26 years, uh, it's a long time, and I know you're going to have a good retirement. I happened to be there for the air quality show event that you put together at the Oxford at Golf Museum Gullwind, for the children. Yeah. It's just fantastic. I made a presentation there. And the children and the parents were so involved, and it's just unbelievable. And the job you did was just absolutely great. And I want to thank you for, for putting that event That was together. a really fun one, too. I was, that was really a excited. Fun one, yeah. That was the day that I retired, too, so it was well, nice. Right. <laughs> Good to go out on, on, a, on a high note. So thank you. Thank that you was, for coming and being there. Absolutely. It was great. You know, And if you haven't gone out there, it's really you know fantastic. I learned a lot you know, being a, an adult of 50-some uh, years old. You know, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Look at Mike's. <laughs> thank you all again. Thank, thank you. So you. Much, uh, other comments, uh, Member Long. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank you um, for your excellent work. You have taken a complex um, issue of air quality and made it very fun and um, enjoyable for anyone who has looked at both the materials you you've presented, but the creativity you've brought to the job has just been outstanding. Thank, thank you, you so very much. Thank you. Other board members. I. I, I uh, I know when um, we heard that Barbara was retiring, it kind of lit up the airwaves and like, yeah. hearing from people from, you know, the, our old C, um, airhead, <laughs> as well as other air um, agencies throughout the state of California. You really have um, set the bar, really. And I'm, I just think that of all the different agencies I've worked with over my career, I think that what you have done has been the best. I really do think that the almanac that you did, I always thought was the greatest. The, the award-winning presentation that we had out in Ojai, that's now what you've done with the Children's Museum. You have an incredible talent, and um, I know uh, we will continue to reap the benefits of that in your retirement, but I, I think we are very lucky as an air district to be able to have had your talent for us and helping educate the children and the public on something that is complicated. Uh, you made it um, really easy to understand and enjoyable to hear about. So just thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank don't you. don't yeah. forget, you're now, you're now a volunteer. <laughs> and the of Wyoming and Oxnard would love you to stay busy. Yes. I would love to yes. do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll take my turn as well. Yeah, uh, you know, as, as an old promoter myself, I always appreciate good public relations. And this has been, you've done outstanding work. And uh, we look, look forward to having you back in the city. And I understand in about three years there might be an open city council seat. That's what I hear. So. <laughs> oh, my. Thank you very much. I heard Thank a moan out there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for coming back in. Okay, bravo. We'll go on to item 12, a receive and file study session regarding U.S. EPA's new national ambient air quality standard for ozone. Mr. Yes. Villegas. This was one of the emerging issues I discussed with your board at the January meeting this year. On October 1st, the U.S. EPA promulgated a new national ambient air quality standard for ozone, and they set it at a level of 70 parts per billion, averaged over eight hours. EPA is citing a key medical study that showed at a level of 72 parts per billion, they found with high level of certainty adverse health effects on an exercising healthy adult. Now below that level, EPA has decided that many of the studies have more uncertainty, so they felt that setting at 70 provided an adequate margin of safety, which is required under the Federal Clean Air Act. As with the old standard, which was 75 parts per billion, this one is an also an eight-hour average, and it's based on what's called the design value. And the design value is just a three-year average of the fourth, the fourth highest reading in any one year. So our most recent year for design value is the 2014 based on 2012, 13, and 14. And we're at a level of 79 parts per billion at our Simi Valley site. Mm. So obviously, early next year, we'll be able to recalculate that design value, including the 2015 data. This is looking at our design value since 2003. And what it shows is remarkable progress. And the nice thing about design value is that three-year average really takes out the year-to-year -year effect you have from meteorology. And it really smooths out the line. As you can see, 
we're, we're, we're moving close to the old 75 part per billion standard. And you can see the green line is now where 70 is going to be. Under the Federal Clean Act, we're required to meet the 75 part per billion standard by 2021. And as you can see from that chart, and we had a very lucky day. We came so close to that standard yesterday. It was unbelievable. Well, we didn't quite hit it in CME. And we actually might see a drop in our design value based on the, what we're seeing so far this year in 2015. So we're getting closer to that 75 marker by 2021. Of course, it's going to be a challenge to get to 70. And the reason I say that is when we look in the out years at the emission trends, we continue to see a reduction in nitrogen oxide and reactive organic gases. However, the rate of reduction is definitely slowing down. And there's, we're really going to be reliant on alternative fuel vehicles and advanced technology methods of moving goods because the big driver is going to be those vehicles and those trucks on the highway and those trains. This gives you a kind of a snapshot of the design values for 2014 at all of our monitoring stations. And you can see the big change with the new standard is that Piru has gone from an attainment reading to a non-attainment reading. The other thing this shows is the Western County, and I'm talking about Ventura, Oxnard, Port Wayne, and Camarillo, all along with the Conejo Valley, Newbury Park, Thousand Oaks, and part of Westlake, they are all breathing air that meets the new federal ozone standard. And, that, and I think that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. It was not always the situation here, and we're, we're definitely making headway. So sometimes when environmental groups say Ventura County has a design value of 79 parts per billion and there's 840,000 people breathing unhealthy air, that's not entirely the whole truth. Future actions, in 2017, EPA will come out with attainment designations and they'd like to base that on the, on the 2014, 15, and 16 data. And of course, we're not gonna be at 70 parts per billion by then, so we're gonna be designated non-attainment. Based on that, a new air quality management plan will be required to meet this new standard it will be need to be submitted to EPA in either 2020 or 2021. And this is where things get a little kind of Alice in Wonderland. We're currently working on our air quality management plan, which is due to be submitted to EPA in 2016 for the old standard. And the reason for this is the Federal Cleaner Act just needs an update. It requires EPA to revisit these standards every five years. The amount of time it takes their science review committee to get through all the medical studies and come up with a recommendation, which is then reviewed by EPA's scientists and Office of uh, Budget and Management, it, it, it just can't be done in five years. And then as soon as they're, they're done, they roll it out, the litigation starts, and that takes over five years. So the bottom line is it was just about a year ago that they actually promulgated the implementation regs for the old standard so that we knew how to write our air quality management plan. So sometime Congress needs to sit down and resolve some of these issues because we're just making lawyers rich suing EPA. It just, they're just a sitting duck under the existing requirements. The attainment deadlines, EPA is projecting that Ventura County will attain by 2025 the new standard. That might be a little optimistic if I was betting, I would have bet between 2026 and 2032, just because of those trends starting to slow. And the other, the history I have, I don't know exactly how EPA came up with that 2025 date, but what I do know what they did in the past, and they would just look at an area and say, you exceed the standard by nine parts per billion, we'll give you this much time to clean up. Well, that, that might make a lot of sense in one of the other 49 states where they don't have catalysts on all their turbines and power plants. They don't have inspection and maintenance programs in their oil fields, et cetera. And they can implement those measures and improve the air quality. We've done that in California. So from here on out, it's, it's gonna be tough sledding for us. 
And I think the key is going to be advanced technology on vehicles, and really we're going to have to get advanced technology on the heavy-duty vehicles. The way we move goods in the state of California is going to have to change if we're going to get there. And I'm working closely with ARB on what they call their sustainable freight strategies because we do have a port. It's not a big one, and we've made a big step forward with shore power, but we're going to have to look at how we move goods in this county if we're going to make progress. I'll be happy to take questions. Questions? Could you review for us again, Mike? What are the penalties if you don't meet the standards? Well, the first penalty under the Federal Clean Air Act, if you don't meet your attainment deadline, is they basically make a tweak to your new source review rule, and the offset threshold for large facilities becomes basically prohibitive. It goes from 1.3 to 1, I believe, up to 2 to 1, meaning it would be very difficult to cite something like a large a power plant or something like that in your county. The second sanction is actually they freeze your highway funds. And I don't want to be the person responsible for that while I'm here. So we're going to meet the deadline somehow. And I, I just want you to know that you know, Dick Baldwin was very good. He sent me on, this, on a leadership group where I actually went out. It was run by Edison. And I sat down and had a lot of time with Police Chief Harold Hurt from Oxnard. He was, he was a truly innovative thinker. And he explained to me what happened when a pepper plant shut down in Oxnard. It was a packing plant. It was, it's just north of Fifth Street. And he told me he knew when that was coming, he hired a Spanish-speaking advocate for domestic violence. And he said his only thing he was wrong with that is he probably needed at least one and a half people. So there is a real cost if you do, if you go out and reduce emissions and really start to cause economic impacts. There's a human cost. So we've got to be really smart when we approach this. And it's going to become more important because those easy cost effective, let's put catalysts on the power plant and achieve a 95% reduction in NOx, those days are in the rearview mirror. And, and we're going to have to be very judicious on how we do this. Manager. Yes. Michael, the ships out in the Channel Islands. Uh, what and actually, have? I just had a conversation with Santa Barbara District. Mm -hmm. uh, the navies, they, ha they actually had some concerns with the vessel speed reduction program, fearing that if, be, if it became more prevalent, some of the vessels would go back through the, the missile range right. as the issue they had with when the California fuel regulations only applied 24 nautical miles out. That's now been rectified. The feds have taken over, and it's 200 nautical miles. But uh, so there is a possibility we'll be looking at a vessel speed reduction program again in, in the coming year. Because I know the Navy was really concerned about that. RDP-21, you know, we had a lot of concerns because. Definitely with the few. We worked closely with. The I went out to their meetings out in Camarillo and definitely yeah. worked with the base and RDP-21. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Supervisor Zaragoza just brought up an issue I wasn't, I wasn't going to talk about. I mean, obviously, in 2016, we have an international regulation on, on uh, low sulfur fuel, so that's not the issue anymore. The issue now is uh, marine mammal protection, and there's been a program f to reward ships that slow down you know, f financially. And as long as that's in place, they're probably going to stay in the channel. And if that money goes away, then, then they, they're going to have problems with the test range, uh, going through the test range. So that's, that's the issue on that. Um, yeah, I find this, this all very interesting, Mike. Uh, you know, we have a federal law that's, that's being brought down to the local level. And, uh, you know, as you point out, you know, we've, you know the, the, the rate of improvement is bound to slow down. We've picked all the low-hanging fruit. We're climbing higher up the tree. There's less fruit there. Um, so this body doesn't deal with mobile sources, and yet that's where most of uh, uh, it, it, most of the uh, uh, pollution is coming from. Uh, what we're dealing with is marginal stuff, and you know if we get down really fine grained, as you point out, there are areas areas of this county that that are doing just fine, and then there are other you know microclimates that aren't. And, uh, you know, I don't know how this plays out around the county, but, I mean, the local folks obviously are dealing with uh, much more targeted kind of, kinds of approaches. So 
Um, since we we can't go after the you know the, the biggest target, which is the mobile sources, uh, you know how do we how do we fine tune our program? Are we going to be looking at different programs in different parts of the county, or, or how, you know cause, because obviously you know that there's we don't have infinite resources. Uh, uh, nobody does. I mean, you point out the the difficulty, the financial impacts. You know, if everybody went out of business, I mean, you know, the pollution would certainly go down. Uh, but we can't have that happen either. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking into the future here, and you talk about 2032, and, and, and that's, that's, you know, I'm not going to be here, I don't think. But uh, uh, is, is so for us sitting here right now in the, in the near term, what can this body do to help move to the, the, the county, which is a fairly gross target, uh, to, the, to uh, uh, where we want to get? I, th I think we're just going to have to do a lot of these programs with, where we partner with the state. Uh, one, one perfect example is shore power. Uh, when it came forward, Air District staff, and I, I think you were aware, we, we were one, the ones really pushing for them to receive the 4.5 million Prop B1 grant. And I think we're going to have to do that. And if you notice in, in, I think it was last month's agenda packet, I had a, a letter in there seeking uh, support for a uh, Department of Transportation Tiger Grant for the port to bring in a rail spur into the port because it's much more effective from an emissions and, and a climate change standpoint to move goods by rail than by 18-wheeler truck. So, and I, I think we're going to have to make sure that we're really smart. Are we doing something that's going to help the port, for example, and lower emissions? Uh, we, we need to talk to the port about the Ventura County Railway. They do have one locomotive. It, you know, it's, it may not be high use, but it is near residence. Can we use Moyer funds? And, and we can now to bring that into a rebuild to a lower emission uh, certification. We probably can do that. We need to be thinking of those programs and thinking about things that are going to allow people to have those kind of jobs that we need in this county that, that, that pay health insurance and have a 401k. Okay, I look forward to this. Other comments? Yes. I just didn't understand something that um, Mr. Sharkey stated relative to the wells that are lowering, uh, reducing ship uh, speed ship, to lower emissions and how, do, how does that well, relate it, it, well, the, 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 the ship, the ships, there's two, there's two, there's two factors here. One is, one is emissions and, and that had, the issue that we had a few years ago was uh, a, a carb requirement for a low sulfur fuel to be used in the channel, which created so, you know, shipping. You know, I, I sat through a big long hearing on on, uh, on ship fuels, and it's, it's pretty complicated if you're shift, if shifting uh, your engine from one type of fuel to the other. There's some problems with that. So they were trying. They were going outside the channel to avoid having to, ch to change fuels. Now in 2016, there's an international rule. They're all going to have to do it. So that's not the factor anymore. The factor now is that we have whales in the channel, mm -hmm. and they're trying to slow down the ships so to reduce whale strikes. And so that's, that's a separate issue from the air quality. Right. I'm just wondering how that related to the naval base. Well, because uh, what, what happens is if commercial vessels coming from Japan, this is the shortest, the, the channel here is the shortest route to LA Long Beach. Uh, it's not that much shorter that if they have to slow up enough, they'll decide we're going to go outside the islands, and that puts them in the middle of the test range. Okay. The test that's range is a problem, yeah. So that's that's so that's what the that's what the, that's the Navy's concern right there because yeah. you know if you if you've got <coughs> if you're paying eighty million dollars an hour for for a missile test and the ship sails in there, you know that's uh, can long be long a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Other comments? I, actually, I did. Um, Mr. Tucker. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> no, I know that when I first got onto the to the to this board, that you, know, you showed me a graph on where we were in in comparison to 1960s and 1970s numbers and where we are today, and the difference is absolutely amazing. Um, I know that your this organization and this board and yourself and your staff have done an incredible job, and I have every ounce of confidence that you'll meet these targets and these goals. Um, but a couple of things that I'm, I'm curious about is, is the overflow for the West County area from L.A. and looking at collaborative efforts between L.A. County because that might be another piece of low-hanging fruit 
Um, I know that when I lived in Simi Valley, for example, we would have smog that would literally come in from the San Fernando Valley that would affect our numbers. I'm not sure how much that might make a difference, but uh, you know, thinking outside the box might be um, that looking at those collaborative efforts or possibilities, and I'm not sure where you're at with that. I haven't heard. But what I'm hearing from everybody here is that I think we're looking for a strategic plan to see what your goals are and how you're going to achieve it. So, I mean, I would say maybe on a future agenda item is to, you know, make sure that we get that strategic plan going. Absolutely. And that strategic plan is the air quality management plan. And you will be seeing the, the 2016 AQMP to meet the 75 part per billion standard in the first half of next year. And that should give us some idea of how things look past 2021 also. Other comments? Yes. Just um, um, one, I think that as a district, your leadership, all of your, all of the, all the staff personnel, everybody's worked hard and with the, with the private sector community, we've made great progress. And, and yes, we do have those areas now like the, the East End that um, uh, we need to see what other triggers can we help that part of the community achieve the same goals because I'm sure the community members wish to do so. And I, I know you participate certainly with all of the CPOs up and down the state and, and the, big, the big dog in LA, <laughs> South Coast, um, to be able to have that communications with them to, to see all the good things they're doing, what low fruit have they been able to capture and make improvements on because it is that the, the flow in, into the basin that impacts that area. So um, it, it'll be a challenge, uh, but it's, um, I, I think we, the progress that, the, the progress we've made over the decades have been to bring the business community and the community along in the solution parts and have to continue to do that. So. Thank yeah. you. Mr. Morgan. Not to be funny, but uh, you know, if we had giant windmills on top of those mountains, areas we have collections, Simi Valley, that's where most of the time we're in violation, are in Ojai, which you can't do much about that. That comes in and just sits in that basin. But you know, in Simi Valley, we had some giant windmills up there that blow it the opposite direction. <laughs> create, create, create electricity going this way and then blow it back. <laughs> Michael, you want to blow it back to auction? What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> Over the other way. <laughs> okay. We're coming toward LA. Okay, good. We make electricity coming and turn another one and turn it back. <laughs> Yesterday, it would almost was an exceedance in seeing you based on transport because we had that weak Santa Ana, it was a very, mm -hmm. you know, generally with Santa Ana, you get pretty strong wind. And that one that we had the past few days, you had that slow moving wind. And yes. it was more of a Santa Ana breeze than a Santa Ana wind. And it did bring air from the south coast that we picked up. And luckily, we just didn't go over the standard. Good. You know, I, w I would say it's really good to recognize that air doesn't respect county lines or right. even international boundaries. Uh, I'm, I, I'm on the SCAG board at this time, and uh, Cheryl Viegas Walker, who is the current president of SCAG, uh, is in El Centro, and the diesel and pollution from south of the border drifts into that, that county, Imperial County, and has uh, significant health impacts on people, as well as the fact the Salton Sea is drying up and all the toxics from what is being revealed by the, the drying of the lake is uh, having health, it's not just for Imperial County, but really for Southern California. So we need uh, regional solutions, of course, and always getting out, of, getting out of the car is really what we've got to try to do, but not easy when public transportation doesn't quite meet all our needs. Madam Chair, one more comment. I think something that's going to make a major difference, being serious now, um, is this hydrogen cell. Because I counted 130 trucks one time, me just going one direction, they're all coming out from the port, out in the valley and scattering. And the, imagine those having hydrogen cells, eliminating all that pollution coming out of those trucks. That will have a major impact on our freeways. And they're trying it out in, in the port, and hopefully we can find the places to, for them to fill up. And that's, again, I'm serious about that. I've been looking at it for a long time. That would help, I think, a major, would be a major difference. And what you point out is some of the solutions that they're finding at the Twin Ports, Long Beach, mm -hmm. San Pedro, mm -hmm. will try to take some of that technology and use it up here just like we did with the shore power. Exactly. Because when you really think of the 710 in Long Beach, 
There are just so many diesel trucks. I mean, you know, when you're on that freeway in a car, you just you want off because you have 18 wheelers on both uh -huh. sides of you. You just feel like what a, if you live there auntie, yeah. and you had to suck it up? <laughs> or if you're in the elementary school right next to the 710, okay. that's not good either. But when you have that many diesels, mm -hmm. even if they are modern low emission diesels, you still have a problem. So they're going to have to look at something other than diesel there. Is that smog that comes over? We'll be reduced. Other comments from the board? Um, Take a motion to receive and file. Yeah. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we'll, thank you very much, Mr. Vegas. Next item is item 13, I believe. Uh, receive and file a study session regarding efforts of APCD to determine if air emissions related to well stimulation will require amendments to our rules. Yes, what I'm going to provide uh, your board with today is just a five minutes of a video, and it's, it's a video I, I've okay. got from the California Air Resources Board in one of their training courses, and I think it just gives the, bis, the best summary of, well, drilling, cementing, casing, and hydraulic fracturing I've ever been able to find. And I think in five minutes, I know, you, I know the Board of Supervisors, you've had presentations from County RMA, and Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources, but this one really helped me understand how they cement and put a casing in and what exactly is happening down there. So with that, we'll roll it. There are many formations with multi-zone oil and gas reservoirs that are vertically drilled and stimulated using hydraulic fracturing to optimally recover these hydrocarbons. In this example, we show a well targeting three sandstone layers, although this number may vary in different oil and gas plays. Once the drill rig and other infrastructure is in place, a bit mounted on the end of the drill pipe begins drilling the well. The well is initially drilled to a designated distance below the deepest fresh water source near the surface. The pipe and bit are then removed and surface casing is inserted into the hole. The casing is then secured into place by pumping cement through the casing and through the shoe at the bottom of the hole. The cement barrier and steel casing prevent any contamination of freshwater aquifers. Once the casing cement has set, drilling of the intermediate section of the hole continues by drilling through the wiper plug, shoe and cement at the bottom of the wellbore and on toward the targeted zones. Throughout the drilling, a mixture called mud is pumped down into the well through the drill pipe. The mud serves to keep the drill bit cool. It carries the cuttings to the surface and provides hydrostatic pressure prohibiting formation fluids from entering the wellbore. As drilling approaches the depth of the first target zone, a technician called a mud logger is brought on location. He analyzes the cuttings, identifying the downhole lithology and any presence of hydrocarbons. As the well is being drilled, he provides real-time information to the company geologist and rig personnel. Once the bottom of the intermediate section is reached, the drill pipe and bit are again removed from the well bore. And intermediate casing is inserted into the hole and connected to the surface casing. The intermediate casing is also cemented to secure the hole. The drill pipe and bit are again lowered back into the hole and drills through the wiper plug, shoe and cement. Once total depth is reached, the drill pipe and bit are removed from the well bore one last time. Next, a logging tool is lowered to the bottom of the well on a wire line. As the tool is pulled back up the entire length of the well, data is gathered to create an electric log. Once the well has been logged and deemed a commercial well, production casing is then inserted. As with the surface and intermediate casing, the production casing is also cemented into the hole. Back on the surface, the drilling rig is no longer needed. 
A temporary wellhead is installed and the location is prepared for the service crews who will ready the well for production. The first of these steps is to perforate or perf the casing. A perforating gun is lowered by wire line to the lowest of the three target zones. An electrical current is sent down the wire line to the perf gun, setting off a charge which shoots holes through the steel casing, cement, and out a short distance into the target formation. The perf gun is then pulled out of the hole. The next step is to hydraulically fracture or frack the zone. Here, sand or other propants are pumped into the well bore under extremely high pressure. When the mixture reaches the target zone, the pressure forces it out through the perf holes and out into the sandstone formation, causing it to fracture. This creates a fairway connecting the reservoir to the well, inducing the released gas to flow to the well bore. Next, a bridge plug is placed inside the production casing, isolating the fracked zone. The hydraulic fracture process is then repeated for zones 2 and 1. Now that the frack process is complete, the plugs are drilled out and production tubing is lowered into the well bore to reach each of the productive zones. Hydrocarbons can now flow simultaneously from each of the zones into the well. I, I think that for me, because you know, I'd always look in the dogger books and I'd find a picture of the casing and the cement and I was like, well, how do you do all that? And it really helped me out. We've been monitoring the actions taken both by South Coast AQMD with their Rule 1148.2 and the California Council on Science and Technology, their new study of well stimulation activities in California. To date, we've come up with three areas I think that warrant looking into and, and we came to the same conclusion as the California Council on Science and Technology. First, the diesel engines, when you're drilling, you use diesel engines, and when you're pumping that much fluid down a well under high pressure, you're using diesel engines to pump. So there you would have nitrogen oxide emissions and toxic diesel particulate. The good news is, is the California Air Resources Board has an airborne toxic control measure to reduce diesel particulate from these portable engines. So that's covered. And in order to really use portable engines that have diesel particulate filters, you have to use modern tier three and tier four engines, which have very low NOx emissions compared to the old diesel. So I think that one, that issue is pretty well handled on that side. The other one, both South Coast and the Council on Science and Technology, uh, we're looking into the issue of when you're adding the silica sand to the fr fracturing fluid, which is mostly water, but you're adding sand to keep those cracks open, and they call it a propant, there's the potential for emissions right there of dust. And South Coast wanted to look at that, but when we looked at the reports from the Council on Science and Technology, they really saw that as a short-term emission and probably more of a worker exposure issue. So we're, we're, we'll be looking into that further, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be a major source of emissions of PM from this type of operations. Lastly, when that fluid that was used to fracture the rock comes back to the surface, in essence, like produce water, it's called flowback, it's going to have some of those compounds, biocides, acids, uh, uh, well, benzene is, is found in oil, yes, along with uh, BTEX, it's just found in, in, in oil, and that's benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, and xylenes, all of them air toxics. So really the, the question is, is are emissions from that flowback through uh, water something we need to be concerned about? And that's something basically that needs to be answered. And what we're proposing to do is continue working with Dogger, South Coast, South Coast, you know, has rules in place to closely monitor and study the emissions from well stimulation. But with the current price of oil, it's kind of a curse and a blessing. We've got time to do the research, but now they're just not doing a lot of well stimulation or drilling activities. So I think the, bl the, the blessing I'm looking at is we've got a chance to work with those two agencies to find out what's going on, get a better handle on it, especially this third item I brought up with the flowback fuel fluid. 
And what I'd like to do is sit down with our local producers, because we may not have a lot of frack jobs, but if we do have one in the county, I'd like to be there to observe it with our engineers. We've also pulled in an engineer who's got excellent critical thinking skills and isn't an oil expert, which is kind of good when you're looking at our rules, because we, we, sometimes the people that wrote them, like myself, we know what they were supposed to say, and we assume they say it, and someone that just looks critically at it says, yeah, you've got a flaw right in the sentence. You know, it doesn't cover, because we never intended it for flowback fluid. Although it covers it, it's from our take, so. And the bottom line, I'll be reporting back to your board on that. And since there's so much public interest, definitely report back to the public on our findings and the environmental community. <clears throat> Excuse me. Comments from the board? Questions? Is methane also one of those gases? Yes, it is. It's not a reactive organic compound, but California Air Resources Board, they're promulgating regulations for methane from oil and gas production. And basically, they're going to be tidying up, tightening up our inspection programs. Other comments? Questions? Appreciate seeing the video. Thank you. That's great. Oh, the music was lovely, too. <laughs> that showed that's a lot of work to do fracking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes not worth it, though. Um, just a personal comment there. Sorry about that. Um, Motion for approval. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Where could people access that uh, video? I'll be happy to provide it. Actually, it's 40 megabytes, so I had to actually, you know, hand carry a thumb drive over to GSA. But we're is it on YouTube or something like that? I'll have to ask to see if. Let us know. The Resources Board knows. You know, I'm sorry, the logo was so blurry. It looked like the West Virginia Oil and Gas Association yeah. to me, but I might just Google that and see you if need I can find, find out it. For us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, on to item 14, receiving five minutes of South Coast, South Central Coast Basin Wide Air Pollution Control Council meeting of March 4th, 2015. Board comments? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Let's go to item 15. I receive and file information regarding application by APCD for Federal Clean Air Section, Clean Air Act Section 105 grant from the US EPA. Nope. We're just applying again. Just yes. applying. Great. Yep. Get, some, get some funds. All, uh, and file. Thank you. A second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We do have a correspondence agenda. Are there any, I, I don't remember what we have to do with this. Just move to all of it. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I see no further agenda items, so we're adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.